Hi everyone, this is Heather from WeddingsByHeather.com where my goal is to equip you with the best techniques and tips to make you a better and more efficient photographer. In this video, we are going to look at the liquify tool inside of Photoshop, but first, make sure you check out my free workflow video series available on my website. I love this photo that I took of Megan and Jay at their wedding just a few weeks ago, but I noticed something. Well, let me first say that it was really cold and it was really windy. So I'm going to zoom in command or control plus on your keyboard space bar to access the pan tool, click and drag down. And I just noticed that his hair was sticking up a little bit from the wind. <laughs> I'm a detail person. So that kind of bothered me. I want to show you how to really quickly correct that using the liquify tool. The first thing I'm going to do is duplicate my background layer. That's control J, command J on the Mac. I'm going to press M in order to access my marquee tool. I'm going to click and drag around the offending area. Now this is not necessary to access the marquee tool in order to get to the liquify tool. I just find that the liquify tool is one of the most memory intensive filters inside of Photoshop, which makes it slow. So if you can limit what is going in that filter, you can speed it up. You could get the liquify filter by going to filter and then choosing liquify. I prefer the keyboard shortcut, which is shift command X, that's shift control X on the PC. And I wanna to talk to you about a few things that you can do with this tool. First, we're gonna make sure that we are on the forward warp tool. And I wanna to talk to you about brush size, density, and pressure. Now, obviously the size of the brush is controlled via the left bracket or the right bracket. If you press the left bracket, you can make it smaller. The right bracket will make it bigger. How big do you need it? Well, it depends on the area. You can also place your cursor over the word brush size. It turns into a scrubby slider and you can click and drag to the left or right to make that bigger or smaller. But what I really wanna focus on is density and pressure, specifically pressure. Now I go into a lot more detail in my Photoshop workshop regarding this tool. But for this free quick video, let's look at the pressure and how it affects the image. If we turn the pressure way up, for instance, and we click and drag, this is what happens. <laughs> Obviously, that is not what we wish to happen. So let's go ahead and undo that with a command option Z. And then if we turn the pressure way down, then what happens when we click and drag is uh, basically nothing. So this has to do with the amount of pressure. That is how much resistance you will get from the mouse when you are clicking and dragging the cursor. So I'm gonna take that pressure up to around 40 and just see what happens. I'm going to click in this area and essentially push pixels down, but I'm clicking and dragging clicking, dragging, clicking, dragging. I'm sort of pushing this hair down, but I also wanna close this little gap. So I'm going to click here and push up and then click here and push down until I shape the hair how I'd like it to look. So I'll just keep clicking and dragging till I get it about like that. Then I'm gonna say okay to return the result. Command D to deselect, that's Control D on the PC. And now I can look at the before and after, and I think that makes a huge difference. Let's zoom out with command or control minus on the keyboard. And when we look at it like that, wow, I love that. I hope that you found this useful. I'll see you in the next video.